Hi children, plus 2 chemistry unit 1 metallurgy introduction. Metallurgy is nothing but the chapter in which we are dealing with the extraction of metals. The extraction of metals is with various steps involved and the chapter is dealing with the properties of metals, uses of metals also. In this chapter, as an introduction of this chapter in this video, we must see the metals, how they are available on the earth's crust. They are available in two different ways. First way is the free state and the second one is in combined state. The free state the metals are available where the native ores, the free state metals are called as native ores or native elements. They are very less reactive metals. For example, gold, silver, platinum and copper are very less reactive nature metals. They are not reacting easily with the other elements present so that they are available in the form of free state. So they are called as native ores or native elements. Then in combined states, so many other metals are available. You might have learned something about the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals in 11th standard. These metals are highly reactive metals and they react very fastly even in ordinary temperatures with other elements and they form various types of compounds of their nature and they are in the form of sulphides, oxides, carbonates, chlorides and sulphates etc. So these two are the classifications of availability of metals on the earth's crust and very important point of this introduction is minerals and ores the distinguish between these two we have our ordinary soil in our area if you plow the ordinary soil using a bar magnet you can see some black color particles start sticking on the magnet and those black color particles are nothing but the content of iron but that soil is not used to extract iron whereas there is an ore called hematite is used to extract iron. Hematite is a ore whereas the soil is not called as ore because from hematite when we try to extract the iron it is profitable whereas in from soil if we try to extract iron it is not profitable. So with regard to the definition of ore we can say the ore is a compound from which a metal can be extracted profitably. Here in that case the hematite is the ore of iron similarly aluminium is present in clay particularly in china clay aluminium is present and the same aluminium is present in bauxite bauxite is the ore of aluminium because here you can see the clay is with a content of 23 to 27 percentage of aluminium whereas bauxite is with the content of 30 to 54 percent of aluminium in these two cases when you see bauxite is with more percentage of aluminium so bauxite is the ore of aluminium whereas clay is the mineral of aluminium so clay cannot be used to extract aluminium so bauxite can be used to extract aluminium so here is the bauxite called as ore of aluminium. So what is an ore if we ask again we can have the definition that the ore is the compound from which a mineral a metal can be extracted profitably. In this with these two examples when you see all the ores are minerals for example bauxite is a mineral of course this hematite also a mineral but all the minerals are not ores. See this soil ordinary soil also a mineral clay also a mineral but these two are cannot be called as ores. So this is a statement you might have learned in lawyer standards and when we go to the types of ores in the book in your textbook it is listed out various metals ores are listed out in your book but here we classified those ores into five different types for example sulphide ore, oxide ore, carbonate ore, chloride ore and sulphate ore. Now sulphide ore example is given here galena that is PBS. This is the ore of lead and for oxide ore example is given as magnetite that is the ore of iron Fe3O4 and for carbonate ore galamine is given here as an example zinc carbonate zinc is present so it is the ore of zinc and we go to chloride ore that is chlorazirite that is AgCl this is the ore of silver sulphate ore that is anglesite can be called as and PbSO4 it is the ore of uh, lead so when you see the sulphide ore is different from sulphate ore. Here sulphate ore is with a group of SO4 whereas sulphide ore is with a, an element of S here. So ores can be classified into five different types. This is not particularly mentioned in your textbook but in the textbook there are so many other ores listed out with some molecular formulas. So that can be easily remembered by you. Many onward answers can be taken from the table column so keep it in mind. And when we go for this china clay the formula is given here china clay Al2O3 with 2 silicon dioxide that is SiO2 and H2O this is water of crystallization present with china clay and bauxite molecular formula Al2O3 and with this 
to H2O. So with this introduction, in the next video, we are going to talk something about the steps involved in the extraction of metals and also about the concentration of force and various types of concentration of force in our next video. So children remember possibilities of asking so many questions from this introduction also native words examples can be asked or what do you mean by native words can be asked or words are available in various forms you know and what are the types of words available also can be asked here in the table column it is listed out what is an ore definition can be asked and uh, make a difference between uh, ore and mineral using some examples they can ask you can give clay and bauxite for aluminium similarly so many other questions also can be asked even the molecular formula of china clay and bauxite also can be asked in one word answers for multiple choice questions so please keep it all these things in mind since it is an introduction you people may not feel that it is also not so important it is also very important with this introduction when you step into the next topic only you can understand the other steps involved in the extraction of metals and the concentration of force further thank you